and welcome to Gyroscope, a show brought to you by Naval Group. I am Emmanuel Huberdo, I'm Naval Weapons Editor for Jane's, and I will be hosting this first edition. Today we'll be talking about the evolving threats and how future warships will adapt. And to answer my questions are two experts from Naval Group. To my right is Hervé Bois. So Hervé, you are Sofas Warship Business Development Manager at Naval Group. And to my left is Stéphane Meunier. So Stéphane, you're a submarine expert and you are Naval Group's Submarine Business Development Manager. And you are both former officers from the French Navy. There will be three different themes um, that we'll be talking about throughout this show. The first one will focus on the new threats. The second one will be focusing on how warships adapt to those new threats. And then we'll be talking about some of the breaking technologies that are coming into the naval world. So to start with the first, our first theme, which is about threats, I wanted to talk to you about how ships are being more and more exposed with new naval technologies. We've seen, for example, in the Gulf, um, UAVs coming close to US Navy warships. We know that a lot of countries are um, developing new kind of missiles, for example, supersonic missiles, hypersonic missiles. Um, China has been testing uh, anti-ship ballistic missiles. Um, the mines are still here. A lot of countries are still using mines. So my first question, which is a, a bit provocative, but in a way, are warships more vulnerable than ever? Um, maybe you want to start, Ellie? Yes, I, I, basically the, uh, the threats are the same than uh, a few years uh, ago, but they are smarter, faster, and they are more stealth than, uh, than before. And uh, you noted the two, two special uh, threats, like the asymmetric threats, and thanks to the uh, drone uh, spread all around the world, the world and very easy to access, very cheap, uh, so it can be used by people uh, and uh, terrorism, and they don't uh, need a suicide mission. They can do their uh, attack mission with the, with the drones. Uh, you were also talking about the uh, super and hypersonic uh, missile, missiles, anti-surface missile are uh, old generation missile, but now they are faster and they are smarter. And the, for those two kind of threats, uh, the main concern of the uh, surface ship is to save time to discover and to identify the threats among the general environment. And that's the challenge of Naval Group, uh, to give some more time, extra time to the sailors to find the threats, to identify, detect them and treat them among a very complex uh, general environment. And uh, you are talking about also the mines. Mines are still uh, a threat against the uh, surface, uh, surface ships, for sure. And uh, as the others, they are smarter. And their behavior is now, for the, the, the most uh, modern uh, mines, just like uh, underwater drones capable of attacking uh, everywhere the uh, surface ship. So that's, that's really the challenge, to give to the sailors more time, and we will talk about, uh, about that, how to do that uh, to detect, identify, and then uh, coordinate the action to, uh, to treat these kind of threats. You think submarines are also more exposed? Yes, we are talking about new torpedoes, for example. Uh, these type of weapons are formidable weapons right now because uh, exactly the same reason. Uh, they are faster, smarter, and further also. Um, just as an example, the F-21 torpedo, which is a brand new torpedo, the heavy white torpedo for, for submarines developed by Naval Group, uh, is a very uh, smart torpedo. That means that in his brain, uh, there is a lot of self-decision making system to avoid any difficulties, to avoid, to avoid decoy, and to be uh, more efficient. Maybe we can come back on unmanned vehicles. Um, this is something that Navy seems to be taking quite seriously. How can you defend a ship against, for example, um, a small unmanned vehicle that could be found um, anywhere and just be equipped with a, an explosive charge of becoming close to a ship? How do you see um, self-defense of ships evolving to counter that threat? Yeah, there are several challenges to, to, to face this kind of threat. The first one is to uh, uh, find this threat, this threat in the uh, environment. As you said, the, uh, the threat, the, the, one of these, his goal is to hide itself among the uh, general environment. So you can have sailing, sailing ship or uh, fast craft with someone on board or not, 
just like the, like the drones. And it's very, very complicated to uh, distinguish the uh, friend from the foe, just like the IFF uh, on the aircraft system. So in Naval Group, we developed something giving to the uh, sailors a complete 360 degree view around the ship by day and night, because at night it's very complicated to uh, identify these kind of uh, threats. And uh, we applied on this detection system, a, a sort of combat management system uh, capable of uh, analyzing the behavior of the uh, different uh, mobile around the ship and try to uh, identify the one which has a, a abnormal uh, behavior. And, and then the ship must have some weapons uh, spread it around the ship to have a 360 degree coverage. So the main challenge is, is the detection by day and night with a system capable of making the difference between uh, the good guys and the bad guys and providing weapons, non-lethal and lethal, to uh, avoid to be uh, finally attacked by these, uh, these kind of threats. And what about, um, there's a lot of uh, things going on in the press about um, the Chinese anti-ship ballistic missiles. Do you think this is something, this is really a threat? This is something that could change the way we, we do war on sea? As far as I know, this kind of uh, threat is more dedicated to very, very high value units, like, like uh, aircraft carrier or uh, ships like that. So that's for the other ships to protect the aircraft carrier. So they, ha they must have something to manage these kind of threats. So, the, the, the new generation of radar uh, must have this capability to detect uh, ballistic, uh, ballistic threats. That's, for example, what will be available on the FDI uh, frigate with the four fixed panel uh, radar. You, you must reach this kind of technology to be capable of detecting uh, these kind of threats. If, if I can add something, uh, the thing which is most difficult is to, to integrate this uh, very performing radar with all the combat system to be much more efficient in globality. We have to connect radars, sonar system, uh, combat system, uh, weapons uh, to, to destroy this uh, target also uh, to be more efficient. And that's the same thing for submarines as for, uh, for surface warships. I was mentioning earlier um, the threat represented by mines. Um, a lot of countries have very big mine arsenals. I'm thinking about China, Iran, Russia. How do you protect your, um, your submarine, for example, or your warship against mines? How do you, can you detect them? Can you make the, the ship more resistant, for example? Yes, for submarines, a mine is, is still a, a, a big issue. And um, as we said just before, um, mines are smarter, they are clever. Uh, so they are not able uh, just to detect with the magnetic signatures, but also uh, they combine acoustic, they combine proximity, they combine everything. So it's very difficult to reduce uh, signatures uh, above a sort of threshold to be undetected. Um, so the idea is to be able, with your submarine, to first of all, detect the mine if possible with sonar system and uh, all our submarines are now fitted with a mine uh, and obstacle avoidance system, uh, fully integrated to a mapping uh, system, uh, in the combat system also. So that's the first point exactly we said, that we said before. And uh, the second point uh, is uh, to, to build submarine uh, as robust as possible to resist to shock, to have a shock resiliency. Um, and uh, this is uh, easier to do that than to try to avoid and uh, to reduce the signatures uh, uh, under, uh, un under the detection, the capability detection of the mine. Which leads me to another question is, um, we know Naval Group was one of the first companies to design a stealth ship, that was the, the Lafayette class. Um, is stealth still very important now for, for warships or submarine in terms of acoustic signature? But Yes, it is still important because if you reduce the radar signature of a ship, uh, it will be detected later, so it will give time uh, to the crew to manage the, uh, the opponent. Uh, and also, it reinforces the uh, capability of the decoys. When the ship is attacked by a surface missile, for example, uh, you can uh, avoid the uh, hit of the missile with uh, jammers and decoys, and you increase the performance of the decoy uh, because it's more easy to hide the ship behind the decoys if the signature of the ship is uh, smaller. 
And for submarines, we're talking more about acoustic signature, aren't we? Uh, yes, yes. Um, main issue to face uh, new threats like uh, uh, smart uh, torpedoes, uh, which is almost the only thing able to destroy the submarine right now, uh, is to, um, of course, uh, use performing countermeasures. Uh, I mean, decoy, very elaborate decoy with jamming and confusion and dilution system. I will be able to come back on that later. Um, this is the first point, of course. But it's One, once again, a, a little bit more uh, easy to push out the threats. So that means that we, we try to be able to detect submarine further uh, and to avoid them to be in position of attacking other submarine or uh, detecting it. And the third point is, of course, uh, signatures. Uh, so to reduce acoustic signatures, uh, it's very important. Uh, that means to have very stealth submarine, no noise making inside. No noise in the water, in, 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 that's the idea, and to be also very stealth against active acoustic uh, sonar emissions. We know one of the big threats for submarines has always been um, airplanes and helicopters. There have been plans for years now to integrate underwater to air missiles. Do you believe that could be um, a way of making submarines less vulnerable to helicopters or? Yes, of course, it's very difficult and it's very complicated to integrate such weapons because of uh, uh, target designation, for example, or how to be sure that uh, these weapons will be efficient enough. It's not so easy from a surface warship right now, so from a submarine it's also a little bit difficult also. So yes, but it's still in progress and we are still studying that. So the second point uh, is to remain undetected. Uh, it's easier and so act on signatures, modify signatures, uh, elaborate more powerful uh, anti-active uh, coating or cladding for submarines, uh, and second, to be fitted with efficient countermeasures. It, right now, it's the best way to, to progress in submarine in the next few years. There's maybe another thread that we haven't talked about yet, is electronic warfare. Um, is there also a way to make warships more robust against electronic warfare attacks from the enemy? Uh, there are also several ways to, to, to manage that. First is the equipment itself, for example, the radar or the, uh, the uh, radio uh, emitters, uh, who are protected with uh, frequent um, evasions and things like that, uh, to be protected against uh, electronic, uh, electronic attacks, mm -hmm. like uh, jammers, but also the cooperation be, um, uh, among, among the force, among the ship. It's really the uh, the next the next generation of uh, fleet uh, fleet at sea the cooperation between the ships and they will share everything with the new communication means that very very uh, fast way to uh, build a tactical picture and if one ship is uh, subject to for example an electronic uh, attack uh, the other will take the con and will Uh, manage the, uh, the, the role of the uh, radar or communication system which is jammed on the other ship, but will share uh, uh, on real time all his information with the ship. So all together for the force, there is no loss of knowledge and, uh, in the tactical situation. It's what we are calling distributed warfare. Distributed warfare, yes. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Now we'll be going to our second theme, and we'll see how naval platforms are actually adapting to those new threats we've just been talking about. <laughs>